Welcome to the Erasmus Foundation podcast. My name is Paul Nugent. Are you looking for answers to life and its meaning? Then this may well be the very podcast you need to listen to. In a series of podcasts, we are going to look at the difficult questions of life and apply spiritual knowledge to find out the answers. Hello. Today we are going to look at at the subject of the world without truth. Now, truth is really something we can't talk enough about because there's such a lack of it in the earth today. And people don't seem to value it as we believe they should. And we're going to talk today about how the lack of truth in, in particular can affect our world and how we live in it. We have Julia, Corinne and Rosina to discuss this with me. Rosina, so what would your first comments be on this subject? I feel that when we look around our world in this particular time, there seems to be a real lack of truth. And I was thinking why truth is so important. We are here in order to progress, to come to some greater understanding about ourselves and about others and about the world in which we live in. And I believe that that understanding can only come if we look at things in truth. And if that is the thing that is lacking in our world at the moment, how can we possibly go forward in dealing with some of the problems that this world is facing at the moment? And I think what really brought this home to me was a comment that I heard someone make in response to a question by a news reporter. The answer that was given to them was that it's okay for people to lie because we're all human and we all do it. And I thought to myself, that is truly an awful thing to say because, first of all, I would hope that we don't all lie. But certainly, you would hope that those in government would give us the truth in order that we may understand what is going on, and how we can best go forward. And if they don't give us the truth, and we accept the falsehoods that they give us, then really, there is not a lot of hope in terms of being able to solve some of the huge problems that are facing this world at the moment. Thank you very much, Rosina. So, Corinne, what we're saying is that Truth has no value, or I know it should have, but according to mankind, it's okay to tell a lie. So what do you think about that? Well, we are human people living on the earth, and as humans, we have flaws. There are seven flaws, and falsehood is one of these flaws. Now, in the world today, the way mankind has progressed, all the flaws are being very strong and very apparent. And the flaw of falsehood is very strong 
and I can't say everywhere, but in many places in the society, in this end of this fifth civilization. It has become, as you say, something perhaps common for people to, to lie, to offer falsehood instead of truth. And truth has lost its true value. And it is very sad because without truth, they cannot be trust. They cannot be confident. They cannot be harmony. And they cannot be peace. There are woes due to falsehood, certainly. People are not confident anymore in the government. People are not confident anymore in the financial structure because it is based on falsehood. People are not confident in the food they are eating. They are not sure it is good for their health. And people are not confident also in, in the medicine field. When, they, when we had this COVID arising in 2020, a vaccine has been produced and many people were not too confident to receive this injection of this uh, vaccine because there is no trust. So it is very important that man awakes to truth again. I am saying again because I am believing that there have been truths before on the earth. And we at the Erasmus Foundation, we have been taught the value of truth. And we are receiving our teachings from spirit. And we know that falsehood does not exist in, in spirit. Now, it is also an individual matter, I am believing. If we expect to be given truth from others, we must first offer truth ourselves so we personally need to endeavor to work through the flow of falsehood and to search our inner strengths so that we may find the courage to offer truth when sometimes it is difficult to tell the truth. In doing so, we acknowledge that we are a spiritual being. We search our inner strengths inside of ourselves and we can walk in dignity and we can hopefully be at peace with ourselves and with others. Thank you, Corinne. Now, Julia, Corinne said a few things there. And one is that we need to tell the truth at all times. Now, does that put us at a disadvantage? Some people might say so. I wouldn't say so. Um, I think that people would probably respect that, even if they maybe don't say anything or react in the way that they might respect it. I think setting an example by giving the truth, however hard it might be, and it may be something that you're admitting to do, to have done or to have said, which is quite difficult to admit to. But I think this will show those who are present a certain strength and they will have respect for you, you know, whatever the situation is. So 
you know, I really do think it's at the heart of, or it should be at the heart of, of all of our lives. And of course, as Corinne and Rosina have said, it, it isn't. Um, and it certainly needs to come back. But I think until certain events happen, as we've spoken about before, we need to almost lose the, almost completely lose the physical and material world and allow our spirit to have a chance to surface more because, as we know, within our spirit, there is a core of strength, which you do need along with courage in order to give truth. So I think until there is more access for people to their minds, which we say is our spirit, it's perhaps going to be not seeing too much the truth. So in many respects, as we've mentioned before, the future has so much going for it, so many positives, because with people not having the burden of stress and responsibilities that they have at the moment, they will have the time and perhaps a little bit more quiet and perhaps in a way a bit more community because we're all going to be in this boat together. Um, and perhaps it will be a chance for people to be more open and more strong and more truthful. And hopefully we'll communicate in a better way as well, as we say here, in a gracious way. And I think all this example that will, I believe, emerge gradually through these difficult times will just build up more people's uh, confidence to be truthful and perhaps um, people will be a little bit more generous as well because times are so difficult and in a way we're in the situation together. So I think this will encourage more truth and you know it can only become a more balanced, more peaceful world as a result. Thank you, Julia. Okay, Rosina. Now, many people would say that a white lie is fine. Black lies, no, okay, we can't do the black lies. But white lies, what harm are they going to do to anyone, these white lies? So what do you got to say to that? Well, a lie is a lie, no matter how small or big it is. Corinne mentioned quite a lot of things that people no longer have trust in. And one thing that did come into my mind was that there seems to be a complete lack of communication in this world. And I think part of that is not because we haven't got the means to communicate. We have more means to communicate now than we ever have done. But people are not communicating because you can't truly communicate with someone or others that you don't trust. And I think that this is something that's very basic. I remember the children, when the children at school would come in, and I would sometimes ask why they were absent from school. And their parents would have primed them not to have told the truth about why they were absent from school. So maybe they had been taken on a holiday, maybe they had been taken out for the day or something like that. But the child was then told that to say that they had a stomachache or a headache or whatever. And really, I thought to myself then, what is that actually saying to a child? You know, what that's saying to that child is that my parent is willing to lie. And if my parent can lie to a teacher, then that parent can also lie to me. And I think many young people feel that they are being lied to or they have been lied to, and therefore they don't have trust. And that is extremely damaging because they need to have trust in the people who care for them. 
It's important that they do. And I think that this is one of the things that is contributing to the poor mental health that we see in our world at the moment, both with children and adults, just simply because they don't feel that they can talk to people because they don't trust those people. So I think that it's really important that we do tell the truth at all times. And really, there is no such thing as a white lie. There is one more thing I wanted to add here. In truth, there is no falsehood. But in falsehood, there can be an element of truth. And I think this can be seen in our world today in the way that often the stories that we hear maybe have originally been based on an element of truth. But that truth has been embellished to a point where it has obscured the truth. And this is often done because people want to excuse themselves from something that perhaps that they've done, um, or they don't want others to see what kind of person they really are, or they have some other reason for trying to cover up the truth. So I think that there cannot be any justification at all for not giving the truth. Excellent, Rosina. Well, Corinne, you've heard that definitive statement there. Some people think they would lie to someone to protect their feelings. That's what they say. They say it's a positive thing. What do you think about that? Well, truth is the daughter of time. So if someone is lying to another person to hide a truth, it is sure that one day or another, it can be some months, perhaps years later, but one day the truth will be known. And the person will realize that you did not have the courage first to tell them the truth. So it can mean that you consider they were not strong enough to receive uh, this truth and they will be disappointed with you. Perhaps they will turn from you and they might be even hurt even more than if you had told them the truth at the first time. They, they will be very much disappointed. Now, perhaps you tell a truth to a person and they will not accept this truth at first, at the first time. Perhaps they will turn from you for a while, but they will always, in the end, they will respect you because you have given them the truth. So after all, it is up to them to find the strength, the inner strength, and to accept what is truth, because there is nothing else really than truth. Truth is. What is not truth is, is not really existing. It is a fantasy. It is not the reality. And we are here on the earth, certainly to face the reality and, and hopefully to grow spiritually through facing the truth. Thank you very much, Corinne. Moving on, we realize that white lies 
are as bad as black lies. They're all the same. And by not telling the truth, you are disrespecting the other person. And in time, they could come back to you and find out you've lied to them, and then they would never trust you again. Quick summary there. Now, Julia, people listened to this podcast and said, that's a great idea. And everyone decided to tell the truth. What benefit do you think that would have on our world? Hmm. Well, I think it would transform our world. Um, It would be absolutely wonderful. I think if people could speak graciously, though, as well, because giving the truth isn't always easy, but it is important how we say things. And also what I think is important to remember is if we don't give truth, how do we feel? And in a way, it's like putting something inside ourselves, which is uncomfortable. And as has been said, truth is the daughter of time. You might live with that inside you for a very long time, having given someone a falsehood. And that is quite uncomfortable for you. And especially then if the truth comes out and you're still around, you have to live with that. But as I say, you've had to live with I would say, quite a discomfort. You might not acknowledge it or recognise the feeling, uh, the reason for the feeling. But I think for your own self-respect, it is important um, to give truth. And as you say, if everyone gave truth, then I think we would start back on the road to balance. And it would be really wonderful to to hear truth and I'm sure one day we will but as with a lot of things it's probably best if these things happen slowly for the lessons to sink in for us all so for example to really understand why it isn't good to lie and why it is good to speak in a gracious manner and I think all these examples for all of us which I'm sure we will see in the coming years as events unfold and as we perhaps surface our spirit more. This will all be a great education, a great opportunity for us to learn spiritually. So while I think, yes, wonderful, if we all started to give the truth tomorrow, realistically, we know that's not going to happen in that way. But the great mind's plan Uh, We don't know what that plan is, but we are seeing it unfold. And we know there'll be good purpose in everything that happens. And we have been given some insight into a future, much more beautiful and peaceful world. So we must accept that at some point in time, it will be a world where everyone will give truth and there will be a wonderful balance and peace all around. And I'm sure we all look forward to that time wherever we are, whether we are here on the earth at that time or perhaps back at home looking fondly at our beautiful Eretha. Nicely put. Thank you, Julia. So we're coming to the end of our podcast yet again. Now I will ask Padina, is there anything you'd like to say? Yes, yes, greetings. Greetings to you, Padina. Yes, I I would just like to say something very simple, if I may. Of course. And really to ask a question, why is it that a person of the earth would choose to lie? And the answer to this is very simple. In every case, it is a lack of courage, which has been mentioned this evening. This is true. And also, as it was said, that in time, the truth will surface. It will be known. And then it will be seen that that person, at the time they offered falsehood, 
they had not the courage to give truth. So they have lost their dignity. They have lost people's respect. And they have shown themselves to be exceedingly weak. And that is very, very sad. And I think it is important that man should stand in dignity, in the strength of his light, which is his by right, and declare his strength and at the realization that he is here on the earth for a reason and a purpose. But above all, it is his responsibility and to honor the great mind, he should give truth at all times without exception. Even if it were to hurt another, truth must be given. For there is nothing in falsehood. It is chaos. It has no content. It has no strength. It is a fantasy. And who would want to live in a world of fantasy? The reality is that light, true light, contains the truth. And if we want to follow spirit and the light, then we should give truth at all times. The Erasmus Foundation is a spiritual teaching and healing foundation based in Laxfield, Suffolk, in the United Kingdom. We have a web page, www.erasmus-foundation.org. If you would like to be a guest on our podcast, or indeed have further questions for us, then please contact me on paul at erasmus-foundation.org and we'll do our best to accommodate you. Thank you very much for listening.